In India, the emergency refers to a 21-month period from 1975 to 1977 when Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had a state of emergency declared across the country. Officially issued by President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed under Article 352 of the Constitution because of the prevailing internal disturbance, the emergency was in effect from 25 June 1975 until its withdrawal on 21 March 1977. The order bestowed upon the Prime Minister the authority to rule by decree, allowing elections to be suspended and civil liberties to be curbed. For much of the emergency, most of Gandhi's political opponents were imprisoned and the press was censored. Several other human rights violations were reported from the time, including a forced mass sterilization campaign spearheaded by Sanjay Gandhi, the Prime Minister's son. The emergency is one of the most controversial periods of independent India's history. The final decision to impose an emergency was proposed by Indira Gandhi, agreed upon by the President of India, and thereafter ratified by the Cabinet and the Parliament from July to August 1975, based on the rationale that there were imminent internal and external threats to the Indian state. Topic. Prelude Topic. Topic. Rise of Indira Gandhi Topic. Between 1967 and 1971, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi came to obtain near absolute control over the government and the Indian National Congress Party, as well as a huge majority in Parliament. The first was achieved by concentrating the central government's power within the Prime Minister. S. Secretariat, rather than the cabinet, whose elected members she saw as a threat and distrusted. For this she relied on her principal secretary, P. N. Haxer, a central figure in Indira's inner circle of advisors. Further, Haxer promoted the idea of a committed bureaucracy that required hitherto impartial government officials to be committed to the ideology of the ruling party of the day. Within the Congress, Indira ruthlessly outmaneuvered her rivals, forcing the party to split in 1969—into the Congress o comprising the old guard known as the Syndicate, and her Congress R. A majority of the All India Congress Committee and Congress MPs sided with the Prime Minister. Indira's party was of a different breed from the Congress of old, which had been a robust institution with traditions of internal democracy. In the Congress R, on the other hand, members quickly realized that their progress within the ranks depended solely on their loyalty to Indira Gandhi and her family, and ostentatious displays of sycophancy became routine. In the coming years, Indira S. Influence was such that she could install hand picked loyalists as chief ministers of states, rather than their being elected by the Congress Legislative Party. Indira S. Ascent was backed by her charismatic appeal among the masses that was aided by her government's near radical leftward turns. These included the July 1969 nationalization of several major banks and the September 1970 abolition of the privy purse. These changes were often done suddenly, via ordinance, to the shock of her opponents. Subsequently, unlike the syndicate and other opponents, Indira was seen as standing for socialism in economics and secularism in matters of religion, as being pro-poor and for the development of the nation as a whole." The Prime Minister was especially adored by the disadvantaged sections—the poor, Dalits, women and minorities. For them, she was their Indira Amma, a personification of Mother India. In the 1971 general elections, the people rallied behind Indira's populist slogan of Garibi Hatau, get rid of poverty, to award her a huge majority 352 seats out of 518. By the margin of its victory, historian Ramachandra Guha later wrote, Congress R came to be known as the real Congress, requiring no qualifying suffix. In December 1971, under her proactive war leadership, India routed arch-enemy Pakistan in a war that led to the independence of Bangladesh, formerly East Pakistan. Awarded the Bharat Ratna the next month, she was at her greatest peak, for her biographer Inder Malhotra. The economist's description of her as the Empress of India seemed apartment. Even opposition leaders, who routinely accused her of being a dictator and of fostering a personality cult, referred to her as Durga, a Hindu goddess. Topic. 
increasing government control of the judiciary. Topic. In 1967's Galaknath case, the Supreme Court said that the Constitution could not be amended by Parliament if the changes affect basic issues such as fundamental rights. To nullify this judgment, Parliament dominated by the Indira Gandhi Congress, passed the 24th Amendment in 1971. Similarly, after the government lost a Supreme Court case for withdrawing the privy purse given to erstwhile princes, Parliament passed the 26th Amendment. This gave constitutional validity to the government's abolition of the privy purse and nullified the Supreme Court's order. This judiciary executive battle would continue in the landmark Kesavananda Bharati case, where the 24th Amendment was called into question. With a wafer-thin majority of 7 to 6, the bench of the Supreme Court restricted Parliament's amendment power by stating it could not be used to alter the basic structure of the Constitution. Subsequently, Prime Minister Gandhi made A. N. Ray, the senior most judge amongst those in the minority in Kesavananda Bharati, Chief Justice of India. Ray superseded three judges more senior to him: J. M. Shellett, K. S. Hegde and Grover, all members of the majority in Kesavananda Bharati. Indira Gandhi's tendency to control the judiciary met with severe criticism, both from the press and political opponents such as Jayaprakash Narayan. J. P. Topic: Political and civic unrest. Topic. During 1973–75, political unrest against the Indira Gandhi government increased across the country, this led some Congress party leaders to demand a move towards a presidential system, with a more powerful directly elected executive. The most significant of the initial such movement was the Nav Nurman movement in Gujarat, between December 1973 and March 1974. Student unrest against the state S. Education Minister ultimately forced the central government to dissolve the state legislature, leading to the resignation of the Chief Minister, Chimanbhai Patel, and the imposition of President's rule. After the re-elections in June 1975, Gandhi's party was defeated by the Janata Alliance, formed by parties opposed to the ruling Congress party. Meanwhile there were assassination attempts on public leaders as well as the assassination of the railway minister L. N. Mishra by a bomb. All of these indicated a growing law and order problem in the entire country, which Mrs. Gandhi's advisers warned her of for months. In March to April 1974, a student agitation by the Bihar Chatra Sangarsh Samiti received the support of Gandhian socialist Jayaprakash Narayan, referred to as JP, against the Bihar government. In April 1974, in Patna, JP called for total revolution, asking students, peasants, and labor unions to non violently transform Indian society. He also demanded the dissolution of the state government, but this was not accepted by centre. A month later, the Railway Employees Union, the largest union in the country, went on a nationwide railways strike. This strike was brutally suppressed by the Indira Gandhi government, which arrested thousands of employees and drove their families out of their quarters. <laughs> Raj Narain verdict Raj Narain, who had been defeated in the 1971 parliamentary election by Indira Gandhi, lodged cases of election fraud and use of state machinery for election purposes against her in the Allahabad High Court. Shanti Bhushan fought the case for Narain. Indira Gandhi was also cross examined in the High Court, which was the first such instance for an Indian Prime Minister. On 12 June 1975, Justice Jagmohanlal Sinha of the Allahabad High Court found the Prime Minister guilty on the charge of misuse of government machinery for her election campaign. The court declared her election null and void and unseated her from her seat in the Lok Sabha. The court also banned her from contesting any election for an additional six years. 
Serious charges such as bribing voters and election malpractices were dropped and she was held responsible for misusing government machinery, and found guilty on charges such as using the state police to build a dais, availing herself of the services of a government officer, Yashpal Kapoor, during the elections before he had resigned from his position, and use of electricity from the state electricity department, because the court unseated her on comparatively frivolous charges, while she was acquitted on more serious charges, the Times described it as firing the Prime Minister for a traffic ticket." Her supporters organized mass pro-Indira demonstrations in the streets of Delhi close to the Prime Minister's residence. The persistent efforts of Narain were praised worldwide as it took over four years for Justice Sinha to pass judgment against the Prime Minister. Indira Gandhi challenged the High Court's decision in the Supreme Court. Justice V. R. Krishna Iyer, on 24 June 1975, upheld the High Court judgment and ordered all privileges Gandhi received as an MP be stopped, and that she be debarred from voting. However, she was allowed to continue as Prime Minister pending the resolution of her appeal. J. P. Narayan and Murarji Desai called for daily anti-government protests. The next day, J. P. organized a large rally in Delhi, where he said that a police officer must reject the orders of government if the order is immoral and unethical as this was Mahatma Gandhi's motto during the freedom struggle. Such a statement was taken as a sign of inciting rebellion in the country. Later that day, Indira Gandhi requested a compliant President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed to issue a proclamation of a state of emergency. Within three hours, the electricity to all major newspapers was cut and the political opposition arrested. The proposal was sent without discussion with the Union Cabinet, who only learned of it and ratified it the next morning. Topic. Proclamation of the emergency Topic. The government cited threats to national security, as a war with Pakistan had recently been concluded. Due to the war and additional challenges of drought and the 1973 oil crisis, the economy was in poor condition. The government claimed that the strikes and protests had paralyzed the government and hurt the economy of the country greatly. In the face of massive political opposition, desertion and disorder across the country and the party, Gandhi stuck to the advice of a few loyalists and her younger son Sanjay Gandhi, whose own power had grown considerably over the last few years to become an extra-constitutional authority." Siddhartha Shankar Ray, the chief minister of West Bengal, proposed to the prime minister to impose an "...internal emergency." He drafted a letter for the president to issue the proclamation on the basis of information Indira had received that, "...there is an imminent danger to the security of India being threatened by internal disturbances." He showed how democratic freedom could be suspended while remaining within the ambit of the constitution. After a quick question regarding a procedural matter, President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed declared a state of internal emergency upon the Prime Minister's advice on the night of 25 June 1975, just a few minutes before the clock struck midnight. As the constitution requires, Mrs. Gandhi advised and President Ahmed approved the continuation of emergency over every six-month period until her decision to hold elections in 1977. Topic. Administration Topic. Indira Gandhi devised a 20-point economic program to increase agricultural and industrial production, improve public services and fight poverty and illiteracy, through the discipline of the graveyard. In addition to the official 20 points, Sanjay Gandhi declared his own five-point program promoting literacy, family planning, tree planting, the eradication of casteism and the abolition of dowry. Later during the emergency, the two projects merged into a 25-point program. Topic. Arrests Topic. Invoking Article 352 of the Indian Constitution, Gandhi granted herself extraordinary powers and launched a massive crackdown on civil liberties and political opposition. The government used police forces across the country to place thousands of protesters and strike leaders under preventive detention. Vijayarahe Sindhya, Jayaprakash Narayan, Raj Narain, Murarji Desai, Sharan Singh, Javatram Kripalani, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Lal Krishna Advani, Arun Jaitley, Satendra Narayan Sinha, Gayatri Devi, the Dowager Queen of Jaipur and other protest leaders were immediately arrested. 
Organizations like the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh RSS and Jamaat-e-Islami along with some political parties were banned. Numerous communist leaders were arrested along with many others involved with their party. Congress leaders who dissented the emergency declaration and amendment to the constitution such as Mohan Darya and Chandra Shikhar resigned their government and party positions and were arrested and placed under detention in Tamil Nadu the M Karunathi government was dissolved and the leaders of the DMK were incarcerated in particular Karunathi's son MK Stalin was arrested under the maintenance of internal security act at least nine high courts pronounced that even after the declaration of an emergency, a person could challenge his detention. The Supreme Court, now under the Indira Gandhi appointed Chief Justice A. N. Ray, overruled all of them, upholding the state s plea for power to detain a person without the necessity of informing him of the grounds for his arrest, or to suspend his personal liberties, or to deprive him of his right to life, in an absolute manner. The habeas corpus case. Single quote closing parenthesis dot. Many political workers who were not arrested in the first wave, went underground continuing organizing protests. Topic. Laws, human rights and elections Topic. Elections for the parliament and state governments were postponed. Gandhi and her parliamentary majorities could rewrite the nation laws, since her Congress party had the required mandate to do so, a two-thirds majority in the parliament. And when she felt the existing laws were too slow, she got the president to issue ordinances a law-making power in times of urgency, invoked sparingly, completely bypassing the parliament, allowing her to rule by decree. Also, she had little trouble amending the constitution that exonerated her from any culpability in her election fraud case, imposing President's rule in Gujarat and Tamil Nadu, where anti-Indira parties ruled state legislatures were thereby dissolved and suspended indefinitely, and jailing thousands of opponents. The 42nd Amendment, which brought about extensive changes to the letter and spirit of the constitution, is one of the lasting legacies of the emergency. In the conclusion of his Making of India's Constitution, Justice Khanna writes, If the Indian Constitution is our heritage bequeathed to us by our founding fathers, no less are we, the people of India, the trustees and custodians of the values which pulsate within its provisions. A constitution is not a parchment of paper, it is a way of life and has to be lived up to. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty and in the final analysis, its only keepers are the people. Imbecility of men, history teaches us, always invites the impudence of power. A fallout of the emergency era was the Supreme Court laid down that, although the Constitution is amenable to amendments as abused by Indira Gandhi, changes that tinker with its basic structure cannot be made by the Parliament, see Kesavananda Bharati v. State of Kerala in the Rajan case, P. Rajan of the Regional Engineering College, Calicut, was arrested by the police in Kerala on 1 March 1976, tortured in custody until he died and then his body was disposed of and was never recovered. The facts of this incident came out owing to a habeas corpus suit filed in the Kerala High Court. Topic. Forced sterilization Topic. In September 1976, Sanjay Gandhi initiated a widespread compulsory sterilization program to limit population growth. The exact extent of Sanjay Gandhi's role in the implementation of the program is disputed, with some writers holding Gandhi directly responsible for his authoritarianism, and other writers blaming the officials who implemented the program rather than Gandhi himself. Rukshana Sultana was a socialite known for being one of Sanjay Gandhi close associates and she gained a lot of notoriety in leading Sanjay Gandhi's sterilization campaign in Muslim areas of Old Delhi. The campaign primarily involved getting males to undergo vasectomy. Quotas were set up that enthusiastic supporters and government officials worked hard to achieve. There were allegations of coercion of unwilling candidates too. In 1976-1977, the program led to 8.3 million sterilizations, most of them forced, up from 2.7 million the previous year. The bad publicity led every government since 1977 to stress that family planning is entirely voluntary. 
Kartar, a cobbler, was taken to a block development officer BDO by six policemen, where he was asked how many children he had. He was forcefully taken for sterilization in a jeep. En route, the police forced a man on the bicycle into the jeep because he was not sterilized. Kartar had an infection and pain because of the procedure and could not work for months. Shahu Galek, a peasant from Barsi in Maharashtra, was taken for sterilization. After mentioning that he was already sterilized, he was beaten. A sterilization procedure was undertaken on him for a second time. Hawa Singh, a young widower, from Pipli was taken from the bus against his will and sterilized. The infection took his life. Harijan, a 70-year-old with no teeth and bad eyesight, was sterilized forcefully. Uttawar, a village 80 kilometers south of Delhi, woke up to the police loudspeakers at 3 o'clock. Police gathered 400 men at the bus stop. In the process of finding more villagers, police broke into homes and looted. Total of 800 forced sterilizations were done. In Muzaffarnagar, Uttar Pradesh, on 18 October 1976, police picked up 17 people, 9 Hindu and 8 Muslims out of which 2 were over 75 and 2 under 18. Hundreds of Hindus and Muslims surrounded the police station demanding to free captives. The police refused to release them and used tear gas shells. Crowd retaliated by throwing stones and to control the situation, the police fired on the crowd. 30 people died as a result. Topic. Criticism against the government Topic. Criticism and accusations of the emergency era may be grouped as Detention of people by police without charge or notification of families Abuse and torture of detainees and political prisoners Use of public and private media institutions, like the national television network Doordarshan, for government propaganda during the emergency, Sanjay Gandhi asked the popular singer Kishore Kumar to sing for a Congress party rally in Bombay, but he refused. As a result, Information and Broadcasting Minister Vidya Sharan Shukla put an unofficial ban on playing Kishore Kumar songs on state broadcasters All India Radio and Doordarshan from 4 May 1976 till the end of emergency. Forced sterilization Destruction of the slum and low-income housing in the Turkmen Gate and Jama Masjid area of Old Delhi. Large-scale and illegal enactment of laws including modifications to the constitution. The emergency years were the biggest challenge to India's commitment to democracy, which proved vulnerable to the manipulation of powerful leaders and hegemonic parliamentary majorities. Topic: <laughs> Resistance movements. Topic. Topic. The role of RSS Topic. Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, which was seen close to opposition leaders, and with its large organizational base was seen as having the potential of organizing protests against the government, was also banned. Police clamped down on the organization and thousands of its workers were imprisoned. The RSS defied the ban and thousands participated in satyagraha peaceful protests against the ban and against the curtailment of fundamental rights. Later, when there was no let-up, the volunteers of the RSS formed underground movements for the restoration of democracy. Literature that was censored in the media was clandestinely published and distributed on a large scale and funds were collected for the movement. Networks were established between leaders of different political parties in the jail and outside for the coordination of the movement. The Economist described the movement as the only non left revolutionary force in the world. It said that the movement was dominated by tens of thousands of RSS cadres, though more and more young recruits are coming. Talking about its objectives, it said, Its platform at the moment has only one plank to bring democracy back to India. The claims of RSS leaders have been contested by political scientist Professor D. L. Sheth saying that these organizations have never borne the brunt Indira's oppressive regime. The RSS projects itself as the champion of anti-emergency struggle but it was in fact, it's only lifeline. One. In a 2000 Hindu Daily article, Dr. Subramanian Swami had alleged that several Sangh leaders were hobnobbing with Indira. He added that the Sangh, at the instance of Vajpayee, even went further to sign a peace accord with Indira Gandhi, to 
Topic. Sikh opposition. Topic. Shortly after the declaration of the emergency, the Sikh leadership convened meetings in Amritsar where they resolved to oppose the fascist tendency of the Congress. The first mass protest in the country, known as the Campaign to Save Democracy, was organized by the Akali Dal and launched in Amritsar, 9 July. A statement to the press recalled the historic Sikh struggle for freedom under the Mughals, then under the British, and voiced concern that what had been fought for and achieved was being lost. The police were out in force for the demonstration and arrested the protesters, including the Shiromani Akali Dal and Shiromani Gurdwara Prabhandak Committee leaders. The question before us is not whether Indira Gandhi should continue to be Prime Minister or not. The point is whether democracy in this country is to survive or not. According to Amnesty International, 140,000 people had been arrested without trial during the 20 months of Gandhi's emergency. Jasjit Singh Grewal estimates that 40,000 of them came from India's 2% Sikh minority. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Elections of 1977. Topic. <inaudible> On 18 January 1977, Gandhi called fresh elections for March and released all political prisoners though the emergency officially ended on 23 March 1977. The opposition Janata movement's campaign warned Indians that the elections might be their last chance to choose between democracy and dictatorship. In the Lok Sabha elections, held in March, Mrs. Gandhi and Sanjay both lost their Lok Sabha seats, as did all the Congress candidates in northern states such as Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Many Congress party loyalists deserted Mrs. Gandhi. The Congress was reduced to just 153 seats, 92 of which were from four of the southern states. The Janata Party's 298 seats and its allies. 47 seats of a total 542 gave it a massive majority. Murarji Desai became the first non-Congress Prime Minister of India. Voters in the electorally largest state of Uttar Pradesh, historically a Congress stronghold, turned against Gandhi and her party failed to win a single seat in the state. Donagher says the structural reasons behind the discontent against the government included the emergence of a strong and united opposition, disunity and weariness inside Congress, an effective underground opposition, and the ineffectiveness of Gandhi's control of the mass media, which had lost much credibility. The structural factors allowed voters to express their grievances, notably their resentment of the emergency and its authoritarian and repressive policies. One grievance often mentioned is the Nasbandi vasectomy campaign in rural areas. The middle classes also emphasized the curbing of freedom throughout the state and India. Meanwhile, Congress hit an all-time low in West Bengal because of the poor discipline and factionalism among Congress activists as well as the numerous defections that weakened the party. Opponents emphasized the issues of corruption in Congress and appealed to a deep desire by the voters for fresh leadership. The Tribunal Topic. The efforts of the Janata administration to get government officials and Congress politicians tried for emergency-era abuses and crimes were largely unsuccessful due to a disorganized, over-complex and politically motivated process of litigation. The 38th Amendment of the Constitution of India, put in place shortly after the outset of the emergency and which among other things prohibited judicial reviews of states of emergencies and actions taken during them, also likely played a role in this lack of success. Although special tribunals were organized and scores of senior Congress party and government officials arrested and charged, including Mrs. Gandhi and Sanjay Gandhi, police were unable to submit sufficient evidence for most cases, and only a few low-level officials were convicted of any abuses. The people lost interest in the hearings owing to their continuous fumbling and complex nature, and the economic and social needs of the country grew more important to them. Legacy The emergency lasted 21 months, and its legacy remains intensely controversial. A few days after the emergency was imposed, the Bombay edition of the Times of India carried an obituary that read, 
democracy, beloved husband of truth, loving father of liberty, brother of faith, hope and justice, expired on June 26. A few days later censorship was imposed on newspapers. The Delhi edition of the Indian Express on 28 June, carried a blank editorial, while the Financial Express reproduced in large type Rabindranath Tagore. S poem where the mind is without fear however the emergency also received support from several sections it was endorsed by social reformer vinoba bavi who called it anashasan parva a time for discipline industrialist jrd tata writer kushwant singh and indira gandhi s close friend and orissa chief minister nandini satpathy however tata and satpathy later regretted that they spoke in favor of the emergency Others have argued that Gandhi's 20-point program increased agricultural production, manufacturing activity, exports and foreign reserves. Communal Hindu-Muslim riots, which had resurfaced in the 1960s and 1970s, also reduced in intensity. In the book JP Movement and the Emergency, historian Bipan Chandra wrote, Sanjay Gandhi and his cronies like Bansi Lal, Minister of Defence at the time, were keen on postponing elections and prolonging the emergency by several years. In October to November 1976, an effort was made to change the basic civil libertarian structure of the Indian constitution through the 42nd Amendment to it. The most important changes were designed to strengthen the executive at the cost of the judiciary, and thus disturb the carefully crafted system of constitutional checks and balance between the three organs of the government. In culture Literature <inaudible> 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 Topic. Writer Rahi Masoom Raza criticized the emergency through his novel Katra by Arzu. Shashi Tharoor portrays the emergency allegorically in his The Great Indian Novel 1989, describing it as the siege. He also authored a satirical play on the emergency, 22 Months in the Life of a Dog, that was published in his The Five Dollar Smile and Other Stories. A fine balance and such a long journey by Rohantan mystery take place during the emergency and highlight many of the abuses that occurred during that period, largely through the lens of India's small but culturally influential Parsi minority. Booker Prize winner Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie, has the protagonist, Salim Sinai, in India during the emergency. His home in a low-income area, called the Magician's Ghetto is destroyed as part of the national beautification program. He is forcibly sterilized as part of the vasectomy program. The principal antagonist of the book is the widow a likeness that Indira Gandhi successfully sued Rushdie for. There was one line in the book that repeated an old Indian rumor that Indira Gandhi's son didn t like his mother because he suspected her of causing the death of his father. As this was a rumor, there was no substantiation to be found. India, A Wounded Civilization, a book by V. S. Naipaul is also oriented around emergency. The plungent English novel by Sanjeev Ter is their own story told by four youths studying at Kalidas College in Nagpur. They tell the reader what they went through during those politically turbulent times. The Malayalam novel Delhi Ghatakal Tales from Delhi by M. Mukundan highlights many abuses that occurred during the emergency including forced sterilization of men and the destruction of houses and shops owned by Muslims in Turkmen Gate. Brutus, U, a book by Chanakya Sen is based on internal politics of Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi during the period of emergency. Vasanzi Jurnani, a play by Torit Mitra is inspired by Ariel Dorfman death and the maiden and effects of emergency. The Tamil novel Marukozunthu Mangai Girl with Fragrant Chinese Mugwort by Ra. Su. Nalapurumal which is based on the history of Pallavas and peoples rising in Kanshi during 725 AD explains how the widow queen and the princess kill the freedom of the people. Most of the incidents described in the novel resemble the emergency period. Even the name of the characters in the novel are similar to Mrs. Gandhi and her family. The Malayalam Autobiographical Diary by political activist R.C. 
Unathan penned while the author was imprisoned as a political prisoner during emergency under Misa for 16 months at Pujapura State Prison in Tiruvanantapuram, Kerala, gives a personal account of his travails during the dark days of Indian democracy. The Tamil novel Karizal Black Soil by Panilan deals with the social political changes during the period the Tamil novel Ashwamedham by Ramachandra Vedanath deals with the political movements during the period in 2001's Life of Pi. Pai's father decides to sell the zoo and move his family to Canada, around the same time of the emergency. Topic film Topic Gulzars Andi was banned, because the film was supposedly based on Indira Gandhi. Amrit Nahada's film Kissa Kursi Ka a bold spoof on the emergency, where Shabana Azmi plays Janata the public, a mute, dumb protagonist, was subsequently banned and reportedly, all its prints were burned by Sanjay Gandhi and his associates at his Maruti factory in Gurgaon. Yamagola a 1977 Telugu film Hindi remake Lok Parlik spoofs the emergency issues. I.S. Johar's 1978 Bollywood film Nasbandi is a sarcasm on the sterilization drive of the government of India, where each one of the characters is trying to find sterilization cases. The film was banned after its release due to its portrayal of the Indira Gandhi government. Although Satyajit Ray's 1980 film Hirak Roger Deshe was a children's comedy, it was a satire on the emergency. The 1985 Malayalam film Yathra directed by Balu Mahendra has the human rights violations by the police during the emergency as its main plotline. 1988 Malayalam film Paravi is about a father searching for his son Rajan, who had been arrested by the police and allegedly killed in custody. The 2005 Hindi film Hazaran Kwaishine Isi is set against the backdrop of the emergency. The film, directed by Sadir Mishra, also tries to portray the growth of the Naxalite movement during the emergency era. The movie tells the story of three youngsters in the 1970s, when India was undergoing massive social and political changes. The 2012 Marathi film Shala discusses the issues related to the emergency. The critically acclaimed 2012 film adaptation, Life of Pi, uses the emergency as the backdrop of which Pi's father decides to sell the zoo and move his family to Canada. Midnight's Children, a 2012 adaptation of Rushdie's novel, created widespread controversy due to the negative portrayal of Indira Gandhi and other leaders. The film was not shown at the International Film Festival of India and was banned from further screening at the International Film Festival of Kerala where it was premiered in India. Indu Sarkar, 2017 Hindi political thriller film about the emergency, directed by Madhur Bhandarkar. See also Baroda Dynamite case Topic. References Topic. Topic. Sources Topic. Atul Kohli. Democracy and Discontent, India's Growing Crisis of Governability. Cambridge University Press, 1991. ISBN 0-521-39161-X. Atul Kohli, ed. The Success of India's Democracy. Cambridge University Press. 2001-2004. ISBN 81-7596-107-4. Aisha Jalal. Democracy and Authoritarianism in South Asia, A Comparative and Historical Perspective. Cambridge University Press. 1995-1996. ISBN 81-85618-75-5. B. G. Verghese. Warrior of the Fourth Estate, Ramnath Goenka of the Express. Viking, Penguin India, 2005. ISBN 978-0-67005-842-6. Bipan Chandra et al. India Since Independence. Penguin India. 2008 2011 Digital Edition, e ISBN 978-81-8475-053-9. Introduction to the Constitution of India. LexisNexis Butterworths. 1960 20th edition, 2011 reprint. ISBN 978-81-8038-559-9. Inder Malhotra. Indira Gandhi, A Personal and Political Biography. Hodder & Stoughton, 1989. 
ISBN 0 340 40540 6. Mary C. Karas. Indira Gandhi, In the Crucible of Leadership. Jayco Publishing House. 1979 1980. Partha Chatterjee. Lineages of Political Society. Permanent Black, 2011. ISBN 81 7824 317 2. Partha Chatterjee. Empire and Nation, Essential Writings, 1985-2005. Permanent Black, 2010. ISBN 81-7824-267-2. Ramachandra Guha. India after Gandhi, The History of the World's Largest Democracy. HarperCollins. 2008. ISBN 978-0-330-50554-3. S.S. Gill. The Dynasty, a political biography of the premier ruling family of modern India. HarperCollins. 1996. ISBN 81-7223-245-4. Subhash C. Kashyap. Indian Constitution, Conflicts and Controversies. Vitasta Publishing, 2010. ISBN 978-81-89766-41-2. T. V. Satyamurthy. State and Nation in the Context of Social Change. Oxford University Press, 1994. ISBN 0-19-563136-6. Further reading Aaron S. Kleiman. Indira's India, Democracy and Crisis Government. Political Science Quarterly 1981-96 No. 2 pp. 241-259 in JSTOR Advani, L. K. 2002. A Prisoner's Scrap Book. New Delhi, Ocean Books. Kuldip Nair. The Judgment, Inside Story of the Emergency in India, 1977. Vikas Publishing House. ISBN 0-7069-0557-1. Indira Gandhi, The Emergency, An Indian Democracy, 2000, 424 pp. Milkani, K. R. The Midnight Knock. New Delhi, Vikas Pub. House. Ramashray Roy and D. L. Sheth. The 1977 Lok Sabha Election Outcome, The Salience of Changing Voter Alignments Since 1969, Political Science Review, 1978, Volume 17, Issue 3 Quarters, pp. 51 to 63 Shori, Arun 1984 Mrs Gandhi's second reign New Delhi Vikas Shori Arun 1978 Symptoms of fascism New Delhi Vikas Sahasrabuddha PG and Vijay Payi M 1991 The People vs Emergency A Saga of Struggle New Delhi Saruchi Prakashan Topic external links Topic Telegram 8557 from the United States Embassy in India to the Department of State, 27 June 1975 AZ. Huck Democratic Norms, Human Rights and States of Emergency, Lessons from the Experience of Four Countries. Memories of a Father. A book by Ichara Verrier, father of a student killed in police custody during the emergency.